السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته last time we reached question 8a we said there is another method we can solve this question uh, we had a skier uh, the skier starts from point A and went all the way till it reached point C uh, her velocity at point C initial velocity uh, was 8.2 meter per second she reached point D and then she stopped. Her velocity stopped, it means her velocity is zero meter per second. The distance between C and D is 24 meter. The first method, we did it using, using work and energy theorem. We use work equal change in kinetic energy. Work, the only force acting on the skier while she was walking, the friction force, and it's opposite to the direction of motion. Here, the direction of motion, opposite to the direction of motion is the friction force. So friction times the distance, this will give me the work equals half m change in velocity square. Just substitute, we found f. And from the formula of the friction, friction is the coefficient of dynamic or kinetic friction times the normal force. And we know that normal force Fn is opposite and equal to the gravitational force, which equal mass times uh, 10 acceleration, free fall acceleration. Okay, so we can find mu from here will be F, friction force, divided by Fn, which is 650, and we got a mu 0.14. The other method, we can use kinematic equation. We can use this formula. V final square equals V initial square plus 2 times the acceleration, delta x. V final is 0, equals V initial 8.2 square plus 2, I don't have the acceleration, delta x 24, and from here we can find the acceleration, take this to the other side, it will become negative, and divide both sides by 2 times 24, so A will give me negative 1.4 meter per second square, negative it means I have slowing down, the girl is slowing down, after that she will stop. And then we can use the direction of motion is in this direction. The gear will stop because of the friction. The friction force is in this direction. This is the friction force. So we can use Newton second law. Okay. So Newton second law. F will equal mass times acceleration. Force is... The friction force, we can use mu times the normal force, normal force mg will equal mass times acceleration, cancel the mass from both sides, so mu will equal A divided by G. It will be 1.4 divided by 10.14. Here it doesn't have any friction because it's a ratio. Now question 2, question 9. Question nine, we have a glider is an aircraft with no engine. To be launched, a glider is uniformly accelerated from rest. So the initial speed here from rest, I have V initial equals zero meter per second by a cable. Here is, this is the cable. And this cable is pulled by a motor that exert a horizontal force, so the value we have here a horizontal force. I don't know the value of this horizontal force in order to be launched. The glider reaches its launch speed. So this is the final speed. This is V final or V. This we can call it U. And this is V. After accelerating for, I have a time, delta T, 11 second. Calculate the total distance. I need delta X. I need Delta x, you can use kinematic equation. But to use kinematic equation, I need to find the acceleration first. So acceleration 
will equal change in velocity divided by change in time. Change, it means final minus initial. Final velocity, 20. 7, initial velocity, 0, divided by time, 11, and this will give me 2.45 meter per second square. And then we can use kinematic equation, V final square equals V initial square plus 2A times delta X or S. So substitute 27 square will equal 0 square plus 2 times 2.45 times delta X. And we can find delta X from here. It's around 148.8. We can round it to 149 meter. Part B of the question. Now the glider and the pilot, both of them, they have a total mass of 492 kilogram. Okay, so I need to draw first a free body diagram. For both of them, my object is the glider and the pilot. For both of them, I can, I can draw them as a box. This is to represent both glider and the pilot they have a mass okay so here their mass um, or here i have the, their weight m times g so the mass is 492 times 10 i don't need this one but let's, let's do it it's 4920 newton during the acceleration, the glider is subject to an average resistive force. Now, if this is the direction of motion, always opposite to the direction of motion is all type of the resistive forces. Now, here I have irresistive. Okay, so opposite to the direction of motion, here in this direction, I have the friction force or air resistance force is 160 in Newton. And there is a cable, if you remember from that question, there is a cable, and here we have applied force in this direction, horizontal force in this direction. Because of the cable, this type of force is a tension force, okay? I need to find the average tension in the cable. I can use a Newton second law, summation of forces acting on the object equals mass times acceleration. Summation of the forces, all the forces, or the net forces equal mass times acceleration. The forces that are in the same direction of motion is positive. Forces in the opposite direction of motion, negative. So I have tension forces positive, opposite to the direction of motion, or opposite to the acceleration, it will be the friction, this is negative, and this will give me M times A, and then we can just substitute. So FT, minus 160 this will give me 492 times the acceleration which is 2.45 this is from part a of the question and then we can find the tension force the tension force it will give me around 1365 0.4 we can round it to three significant figure, 1,370 in Newton. <clears throat> now next, C. A cable is pulled by an electric motor. The motor has an overall efficiency, 30, 23 uh, percentage determine the average power input to the motor. Just let's refresh our memory a little bit about the equations used for power. So efficiency, this is the first equation, efficiency. Efficiency is always out over N. Could be power out over power N. It could be work out over work N could be energy out over energy N. Also, power, power, it's work over time or energy 
over time or if the object is moving power will be force times the average speed or v average these are the equations so here there are around three different methods i can do this equation i can solve this equation the easiest method i can find i can use this formula p equal forces acting on the object times the average force and then from this equation from the efficiency equation p out over pn we can find the power n power n which is done by the motor okay so let's do that so first i, I need to find the average velocity average you add the velocities divided by two because i have two velocities initial and final so final velocity 27, initial velocity 0, divided by 2, it will give me 13.5 meter per second. And then I can find P out. P out, which is exerted by what? By the tension force. Okay, to launch the glider. To launch the glider. So this will equal FT times the velocity, average velocity. And this will equal 1,370 times 13.5. It will give me 18,495, which is around 18,000 or 18 kilo watt or joule per second. And then I can use the efficiency equation. I can use this equation to find Pn, just a swap. From here, I can find P n, P out over the efficiency. So P n will equal P out divided by the efficiency. P n, which is done by the motor. So this one, it's done by tension force, and this one done by the motor. Just substitute 1,000. 18, sorry, 18,495 or 18,000 kilowatt, either one of them is fine, divided by the efficiency 23%, which is 0 0.23. And this will give me 80,413 watt or 80,000 watt or 80 kilowatt. <clears throat> okay, G. Uh, the cable is wound into a cylinder of a diameter 1.2. So I have a diameter, I have a cable, the cable is wound into the cylinder. From the diameter of the cable, I can find the radius. So, diameter is 1.2 meter. So, from here, the radius, diameter divided by 2. So, it will give me 0.6 meter. I need to find the speed. The speed, this is the velocity, 27. Calculate the angular speed. Now, what is the relation between uh, speed and angular speed? Speed, it's the angular speed times the radius. That's why we calculated the radius. Just a substitute, so omega will equal the speed V divided by R, and this will give me 27 divided by 0.6. You should get 45, and don't forget the unit, radian per second. Last part of the question, just to draw free by diagram. Free by diagram, here you have lift force that is exerted by the cable. Okay, down, weight, the weight of the glider. So I have Fg. This is the direction of motion. Opposite always to the direction of motion, I have the resistance. So this is air resistance or drag force. So we can call it air resistance or the drag forces. Okay, that's it. We'll continue, inshallah, next uh, video. Thank you.